Generic greetings and welcome back once again to Airships Conquer the Skies. Today's beverage is a quite filling protein shake, strawberries and cream to be specific. So welcome back to the game. Previously we were designing and fighting and specifically looking at a new design called the Magpie and it was pretty much just a reimagined Sparrowhawk with all of the normal marine barracks ripped out and instead replaced with the Wasp Killer Marine Barracks which have this sort of clockwork uh, mechanical armour with a... well, know what to say, they've got a, they've got a minigun. Uh, <laughs> It's, yeah, it's an interesting design, and, well, that Gatling gun is very effective, the armor is really good, but on a on a vessel that is twice as expensive as the Sparrowhawk, that's also slower as well as, uh, doesn't really go uh, as high, it's, it, it's not for us. I think we can do better, and there's been several suggestions for changes, and basically, we are going to revisit the entire idea. So, bye-bye goes the magpie, and let's start from scratch. So, over to the troops here and once again we are going to go with the wasp killer marines one and then two and the idea is to make something that is very cheap or as cheap as you're going to get with these things here because each of these costs 206 anyway but relatively cheap relatively fast with a decent service ceiling and we want to be able to go right above the target i'm specifically looking uh, not really at not really at um the other airships although that is an option but mainly uh, ground vessels and also static structures so we need to make them if we if we get under 700 points i'll be happy with that so under 700 generic units of currency i'll be happy with that design anyway this is the wasp kill marine barracks we want to go across and then drop down so it needs to be good for drag in that area let's just go over to our pathing here and we want to go for well how we're going to keep it aloft well if we go over to the where is it lift we've got things like large suspendium dust tank we've got large suspendium chamber i don't want anything active that requires coal so i don't want any of these so we are limited to i mean <laughs> moon dusk fragment may not how high would we get a uh, 925 meter service ceiling no I don't think we'll need that um the pressurized suspendium dust tank is is an option. I mean, obviously, if it gets punctured, then it goes all kinds of south, literally heads south and hits the ground. But, I mean, that should suffice. Anyway, let's try that. And we need propulsion. We need uh, more supply hatches. And we also currently can't give commands to the ship. Well, we can resolve that latter one easily by going for a cockpit there. And we also need a maybe a berth there and berth there, maybe, maybe, okay. And that would provide us with our crew of six and recommended is three. That's fine. We need somewhere to, well, we need somewhere to get out of the vessel. So over to resources and then a wooden supply hatch and then there it goes. It has no propulsion. We can also go to propulsion and to, well, again, propellers. We're not going to use those. We could put a sail on the back and that would that would function. So the current price of the vessel, including the wooden armor, is 576 that's pretty good. Service ceiling is not ideal at 232 meters, though. Is there something we can use that's a bit lighter? The sail is... where is it? 120. What about things like a top sail? That's half the price, but also not as much propulsion. Okay. We've also got this uh, sail here. What is this thing? I don't think I've ever used one of these in anger. This is called a... Uh, gaff sail, it's weight 100 and generates 110 propulsion. The junk sail is the same weight as the other one. Mm, you know what? I do I do think maybe one of these is is in order. I mean, we could place that one like so. It requires... It does require two sailors, though, to, to manage. So, I mean, that's 232 meters service ceiling. One of those, the junk sail, would be... Ooh, 224... This one, 234. So there's not much in it. So, I mean, the difference is basically this is probably better for us. Actually, you know what we could do as well? We could probably put it on the back there because <laughs> we do have access to it. Okay. The main issue I'm seeing is the commands every 10 seconds. That's not acceptable. 
That is far from acceptable. We need it four seconds. That'd be better. Crew six recommended seven. We can manage that. We can definitely manage that. All right. So let's do maybe that. Okay. Yeah, so pathing is good. We just need to make it now pretty good for vertical and horizontal drag. So, horizontal drag, going forward is, okay, 44. We need to just put in a couple of angles there, but it's the vertical one that I'm worried about. Actually, that's actually really, really good. I mean, this isn't connected. Actually, is that connected? This is, it's connected somehow. Because you can get access to there. I don't agree. Anyway, let's go ahead. And obviously, we haven't got anywhere to put out fires or repair or anything like that. But it is 585 generic units of currency. So it is very, very cheap indeed. So let's go ahead and add in maybe just a point. Do we just go for a straight point? Uh, currently, it's 19 for the vertical, sorry, horizontal drag. No, vertical drag was right in the first place. Whereas if I was to do that... And that, and that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, without putting anything in, it's better. <laughs> it's just better. Um... <laughs> so I said just not put anything in there? Is that what it's telling me? Really? There's 17 to do that. 15 if we did that. But the thing is, putting in this takes it to 22. So that's better like that. But the sail isn't even attached there. Oh, I, I really don't like the look of that at all. Is there anywhere else we can put this? I mean, it would connect up there. And that's 13 drag for that. Okay, there must be some sort of decoration I can put in to make it look better. Let's go with the forward and... Ooh, okay. So obviously, I'm not bothered about the reversing... Or going up in terms of the drag. Like that, 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 yeah, couldn't care less about that. But the forward, we, we do have to sort something out. So we could have a, a relatively easy sort of connection here. That takes it to 41. What was it beforehand? 45. What if we were to do that? That would be 44. Spin this round. One, two, and fill that in. It would be 40. So quite frankly, not much we do would really help. And I'm going to guesstimate, perhaps wrongly, that vertical drag... Oh, that's 20. That's okay. I mean, we just made a diamondy pointy thing. I think it'll be good in that direction, but I don't think we need... I don't think we need it like that. I think if we remove those and we put in that and that, that is acceptable. Vertical drag is 17. We can take it to 20 by removing that. Fine. What else can we put on the bottom? We can put spikes on the bottom. <laughs> I like the idea of spikes, actually, although it does increase the drag by 1%. That's not really... That's not really something I'm concerning myself with. I just like the idea of spikes on the bottom, so when we go down, it rams into it. I mean, we could technically put a ram on the bottom of that. We could have a weapon here and use, for example, this cow catcher. So I could put a cow catcher there, but it's increasing the cost by an additional 80. So, no, I don't think we will. Okay, we'll accept that for now. Let's go with some... Maybe shapes and decorations, and maybe somewhere to, if I connect the pipework up. So, would you turn the bend that way, and if we rotate that and put that like that. And is that going to affect drag? May It may do, it may do. But, oh, can't we just go straight into there? No. I mean, we could have it, like... That. And it basically just connects from the top. <laughs> uh, and a fancy lantern on the bottom. I mean, there's something I quite... There's something quite nice about this sort of going up and round. It's different from anything I've made. It's just a... It's not a square, but it's getting close. But I mean... Just this 
pipe work stuff. That might, I quite no, I quite like that. I, I I do quite like that. I think we'll I think we'll go with it. I think we'll run with that. Okay. Is there any other things I want? I could have a red lantern on the bottom. I could have a fancy red paper lantern. No, I think the the brass lantern, the brass lantern does work. So, service ceiling two hundred thirteen meters. That's fairly poor. Speed is good at one hundred twenty nine. Commands, which is the main one, that is pretty good. Okay, so we've got wooden armor. There we go. How much does the the brass weigh actually? If we were to remove the brass, so oh, it's only weight one. So. Anyway, I'm going to save the design. Actually, we'll drop that there. Save, and we will save it as a magpie. So the other magpie we are completely removing. So let's see what this is like. So we'll go to combat. We're going to go over to a building. The building we're going to put in will be the Silent Watcher. So this is your standard affair that's in the game. And it's got one, two, three, four, five cannons, one, two, three, four, five rifles. So we can indeed get shot very, very easily. I should point out as well, obviously we are testing this in isolation. Oh wow, the service ceiling is pretty much just the, the, the skybox there, so it can't go further than our starting position, but that's fine. So immediately I'm going to tell it to ram, and I'm going to say ram to there, because when we unpause it here, we are going to get shot, and I've realised this is actually pointing backwards, but it doesn't really matter. Um, well, actually, you know, it does matter because it's more efficient the other way, but hey-ho, it's, it, it's working anyway. So, the reason you tell it to move first is because by the time you get halfway, you're ready for another command, which the command is to get them to board. And now we're going to ram to there, and go, go, go. Oh, it goes down quickly! And there it is. So, we are going to ram up and round, and then... And then, and then we're going to drop down to there. So, job done. And we'll just board the ship. Oh, ground the ship. That's it. One. Okay. I was going to say, one of the downsides with that vessel is that basically you can lose even if you would have won. I'll, I'll follow up on that one. I'll expound. Yeah, if you are still boarding, and they're still rinsing through the defences, but the ship that they originally came on gets destroyed, and you don't have any ships, it's game over. But it didn't last... It did not, that did not happen there, so that's good. Let's go with a different building. We're going to add the building of the... We'll put the orc in, and this will be uh, another test. Let's go for a airship, and naturally we're going to go down to the magpie. Magpie we will put in... That's not the case. Put it in there. That's fine. Start the fight. Immediately go to ram. And there. Now, this is a bit different because this vessel... Oh, sorry. This structure has three of the um, aerial... What are they called? They are not aerial torpedoes. They are an aerial charge. Basically, they launch up. So, when we go above here... There's the aerial charges, but I'm not concerned because it arms the fuse based on where the uh, where you sent them. And they also have a minimum range, which means if we do this... Hang on, do they have a minimum range? Yes, they do have a minimum range, uh, but it's not <laughs> it's not what I thought. Okay, let's um, get back here. So, we have, once again, our boarding crew who is going around and... Um, well, put it this way, they're not counting the amount of shots fired. They are not... In uh, <laughs> in a hurry to to uh, <laughs> to save ammunition, and that is another victory. Okay, let's try another combat. We'll probably have a an actual day fight here, desert day, and this time we're going to put in. I mean, we could put some more buildings in. Naturally, you would normally run with multiple buildings. One, two, three buildings, like that. And that means airships we can go for. Once again, same thing. We're going to go with the magpie. And it's going to be one, two, three. So we are underpointed by about 200 points. So nothing that... Nothing that's major, but it's, I mean, it's, 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 it is noteworthy, I guess. I guess it is noteworthy. Um, and we are going to basically board all three at once. So I've told the one at the front to board the one at the back, the one in the middle to board the middle, and the one at the back to board the front one. And because we've got those two, um, let me just unpause it there. Yeah, because we've got the two command posts we can give orders every four seconds which means we can do things like that hot drop and there we go and then what i'll do 
is because they've been dropped off, we'll fly off. Oh no, that's a shame. Um, I'm going to have to board this other thing. We've lost the sail. See that? The sail's all torn to pieces, torn to shreds. Um, from here then, I'm just going to move and go to there and... Wow, is that a capture straight away? All three captured. Okay, so we lost one of those. We lost a magpie, it's a mobile. In a campaign, we would be able to salvage it. But we captured all three of those in pretty much no time at all. Now, elephant in the room. If we were to have... Ooh, there's a nice hailstorm there. Snowstorm, nice. If we were to have the magpies... 622 points. So two of those is... <laughs> huh. It's it's almost exactly half the points of a Sparrowhawk. It's two points less. Is that right? I think it's two points less. <laughs> yeah. We can afford two magpies. Four. Sparrowhawk. There you go. 100 and, uh, 1,244 is 1,246. The Sparrowhawk w will probably win simply because it can go higher. But then again, it does have to board us. So I'm going to tell these guys to board. Now here we go. Let's see what happens here. So it's going to come above us. And they're going to try and board. They have boarded. They've successfully boarded. Now, I can't board them. Can I board my own vessel? <laughs> so, it's dropped that off. Okay. But, do we still have these? We still have the magpie. Interesting, look, there's the crew. The crew's there. Board that vessel. Interesting. Interesting. This is not something I would have thought had been a one we'd have to test. Oh, we've... What? We've captured the Sparrowhawk. Sorry? Since when? Um... <laughs> right? Maybe one person got on board? But yeah, it can only board one, and I'm going to do that again. But I'm... <laughs> right. Airship. Sparrowhawk. And airship magpie. Start. And I'm just going to sit back. We lost that vessel because they boarded us. And our guys were outside unable to fight. It looks like they've done a boarding. I believe <laughs> this guy has been saved from death. Uh, it, as this stopped dead, he was catapulted straight into that one, whereas this is actually the boarding target. But let's put it to a slower speed. So they're going to come on board. And... <laughs> yep, that's exactly what I expected. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so... The the poor guys, the poor... Are they even marines? Yeah, the poor marines have jumped on board. Climb, the cl the climbing on the sail here. Over to this. And then have proceeded to start fighting. Well, I don't know if they were informed of what they were going to end up meeting. But yes, they've been... They've bumped into an armoured soldier with a gatling gun. And they've been... Well, they're armed with basically uh, fury and fists. So now, we can basically do what we want. Now, here's the thing. We don't have any weapons. We don't have any weapons. So, ah, there we go. So, basically, being unable to uh, fire is normally a bad thing. But as you may have seen there, this thing was able to just ram into the top of this. And we've deposited two, only two of the marines on board, the clockwork marine guys and there you go we've captured it this is this is unprecedented that the sparrowhawk has been bested 
Okay. Let's try another combat. Let's try, I don't know, maybe a, a, nice, a nice flat map. Oasis. A nice dawn fight. Land ship. Let's go for something we know is okay. We know the Titan's good and we will do a Titan fight. Let's put the elk on. Let's put the elk on the table. Wow, nearly 3,000. So, airship. Let's give ourselves a fair chance. One, two, three. We're still well underpointed. But that's fine. I'm going to tell them to board that ship there. I'm, I'm boarding it first because I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to incur the wrath of the flak, although the inevitable has happened. And the first ship has lost its sail. Luckily, I am able to push it because <laughs> it can still control its elevation. And there we go. There's the boarding. There's the boarding. We've missed the other one. We've lost two sails. Darn it. All right. So that's far from ideal. These guys move the troops. They're not moving. Board ship, that one. And then the troops are just landing on the ground. But we've still won. We've still won. Nearly 3,000 points versus 1,800. And we won comfortably. All right. Again, I should point out the obvious. This is testing them in isolation, not in a campaign without logistics, and probably against some unfair lineups. But last time, it was sort of 50-50 whether we're winning. This is just no contest. And we know one of the downsides would be we're getting bored back. Not even a problem. We just, I mean, unless the people who come on board are, I mean, the aerial hazards, maybe? the ones with, No, even with the ones with jetpacks, we wouldn't... Because our guys are just armoured. They lack maneuverability and agility that don't lack toughness anyway 4722 let's put in one two three four we're about half the points board the vessel and let's see how we get on and ram 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 go 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 and a further go so obviously we're going to get on top of this thing. And going to get a lot of flak. But we are boarding. Now, naturally, we have lost a lot of our... Oh, good grief, we've lost all the vessels. This might be one of those cases of we are going to lose because we've lost all the vessels. Mm, actually, up. Go up. Up, up, up. Because... Oh, no, they've got flak on the back. No! <laughs> I was going to say, hang on. I want to go further up because they don't have any flak left. But they do have flak left. And that's bad. Uh, I can only alter my elevation. I can't alter my direction. Okay. But again, I think this is a case of we are going to see that uh, defeated screen. Unless we can board them faster. Because this is their command center. Actually, I don't think it's a command center. That's a, that is a specific building. But this is where their command is. It says defeat. I don't agree. I don't know what your thoughts are, thoughts are on the matter on that one. But let's have a look. We've taken loads of damage. Damage taken, 1,443. That's ourselves. They've taken 1,357. We don't have any weapons. That weapon, the damage that we caused was solely from ramming. And... What about crew? Crew HP healed. Four. four. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like I say, if we had another ten seconds, I think our marines would have taken that. Interesting. Let's try that again. We'll go for land ship. The Titan. And airship magpie. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
seven, eight. No, nope, that's overpointed. There we go. That's about evenly pointed. So we're gonna we're gonna bring these in waves. So there's the first wave. I'm gonna tell them all to initiate boarding naturally because we we might as well do that. There is a danger of them being shot, but uh, well, that's the nature of the beast. So I'm gonna bring them down away from the flak. I really don't want to be versing that flak. But saying that, we are then going to drive them above the uh, the vessel. Well, that was the plan. It doesn't look like that's actually happening. So here we go. They're now above. We crash in there. And are we able to get the marines on board? Are they even about? I don't think so. Oh, hang on. Um, I think I've managed to managed to mess this up. I've double clicked at some point, and that's um, brought the other guys around. So there is the boarding. We are still boarding. Where's this other one here? It's uh, over there. I'll just tell it to go back over. Get all these guys to... Well, have we initiated boarding? I think so. We've still got some crew on this, have we not? Yes, they're hanging, around, they're hanging on the outside there. Let's go. And it's, it's the flak that I'm worried about, you see. And can we get... There's the drop. There's the hot drop. Bring this back over, although it's decided not to do what I wanted to do. I'm going to try and ram this vessel into there to try and take out the flak, which we've done. And now we just need to get this out of the fight. We just need something to survive. Um, I think that's a victory. It is! Victory! Excellent. Okay. Let's have maybe one or two more fights. Airship. What's a big airship? The Vindicator. That's a big airship. I mean... At this point... Is this just... Like, are we doing this because we can? Because it's... <laughs> because we know what the outcome's going to be. I mean, I genuinely don't know what the outcome can be. Or will be. Um... But I know that one of our magpies is going to fall out the sky very quickly because of the fire. Because guess what? We can't put it out. Um, anyway, we have... We have lost immediately. Where's our crew? They ain't in existence anymore, that's for sure. Good grief. Hold your course, navigator. <laughs> I think the flak took them out. But it shows you just how effective uh, as a ramming vessel these things are. Okay, defeat. Let's uh, go to combat again. Airship. It is the ISS Vindicator. Again, giving it a fair chance by putting it at the back. Let's go for... That's a wasp. Airship the Magpie. One, two, three. This time, four. That's still under half price. Let's initiate the boarding. The problem is that doing that, naturally, we are going to get shot. But, uh, yeah, let's let's get away from the flak. Uh, the rain is actually helping us a bit here. Oh, we've lost sails on this one. So we've already one vessel down. And now what we need to do is come on the top. And that's not what I wanted to do at all. Let's get around the back. And we have got some on board. I've got some on board. And specifically... Let's see if I can bring this one down. Where are they? Uh, looks like they're in the engine room. Looks like they're in the engine room. They have lost all propulsion as well, I should point out. They have lift control. But they don't have control over there. Yeah, their direction things. They just bumped off the right hand side of the of the screen there. And where the bridge is here, we've got a guy. Yep. Yep, taking command of the ship. Alright. Well, that is a victory. At half the cost of that. Now that's not uncommon. Let's not let's not, you know, paint this as any great feat. Because boarding, traditionally in the game, has always been powerful. Right up until the point where you are bested. Um, where a better boarding vessel, or they've just got loads of defences. Or, as we've seen, they just destroy your ships before you can complete the boarding action. I like doing it because 
boarding is not really a thing in a lot of games, so I tend to have a lot of vessels that's all about boarding, and it's very efficient just to take other stuff, even if you're just going to scrap it, especially in the, like I say, the campaigns. But yeah, I'm going to make this, I'm going to mark that as probably vast improvement. The other thing was, it was a bit lazy. Let's paint it how it is. We just took the Sparrowhawk and shoved the Marines on there and changed the Grapeshot Cannon to a minigun. That's all we did. And for that reason, the concept was proven to work, but it wasn't the right vessel for it. The delivery system was flawed, whereas this one, no, not so much. Two Wasp Pillar Marine Barracks, two cockpits in order to get it where it needs to go, and we can initiate commands very quickly. Enough crew to make it work. And pressurised dust tank to uh, keep it aloft temporarily. 200 and, oh, sorry, 622 points. We we could potentially we could potentially improve the design. <laughs> I say improve. What I mean is cheapen the design by going for either wood wall, which will take it to 578, or if we really wanted to cheap it out, we could make a canvas. And it's still the same points cost, but the service ceiling is higher of 233 as opposed to 213. I don't think it's worth it. I think that's a fairly decent balance. What would defeat this? Well, lots of long range shots. I reckon the, I reckon things that hit pretty much instantaneously would do a number on these. So, suspendium, well, suspendium in general, suspendium weapons. So we're talking things like the suspendium disruptor, the suspendium ray would do an absolute number on these. The suspendium cannon would be very effective. Flame throws would be exceptional, and just lots more flak just to deny their, just to deny their boarding, and a bomber, a bomber that can literally go here. That's them defeated. You just have time. But for a very cheap design to get into a place and drop these Wasp Killer Marines on a vessel, or more specifically dropping them on a slow-moving land ship or a stationary building, that's where it's at. Either way, I hope you have enjoyed this look at Airship Conquer the Sky and the Magpie version 2, I guess. Like I said, there was several comments saying they would like to see a revisit and had suggestions for it. Most of those have been implemented into this one, and I'm happy for it. It seems to work. Either way, I hope you have any, well, if you have any tips for uh, designs, improvements, things you would like to see, or just general comments, then yeah, there you go. Pop them in the comments there. Hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, and generic partings.